Gudyantif, Chavdala Tevis. Even though one would wonder why is it a Gudyantif, but Yeh uh, Mishtalkas and Hilula, you know, the first year may be sad, the second year, but after a while, it's considered to be a day of Poyal Yeshua's Beker of Aretz, as the Alter Rebbe himself writes about the Yerzeit. And this day, all the work and all the Torah and all the Avodah of the Tzaddik rises upward to another level. And Poyal Yeshua is Beker of Aretz. It brings down Yeshua, redemption, salvation to us below. Fifty years ago, um, literally this time, on this day, the same Kfi as the Alter Rebbe passed away around 10.30. Masai Shabbos after Abdullah in a city called Piena. And the Rebbe, 50, 150 years later, was Tav Gimel, 1963, came down at 10.30 and at Fabringen, 770. It was a very... I, mean, I was a kid, I don't remember, I was a baby, basically. Uh, but uh, I heard from the people there that it was unbelievable, Fabringen. Then uh, the Rebbe spoke, he started out, he says, when you Fabring on the day of uh, Hilul of a tzaddik, of the Rebbe, it's like you're giving him a pan, personally, and asking for brachas for you and your wife and children and family. So the Rebbe said, that's what we're doing now. He quoted the Friedrich Rebbe and then started the whole Fabrengen, very powerful Fabrengen. One of the things the Rebbe spoke about was actually a Fabrengen from the Friedrich Rebbe, Topshin Beis, where the Friedrich Rebbe spoke about the 50, the periods of 50 years from the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov was born in the year Nachas. So every 50 years something significant happened. Uh, Nachas was Tav Nun Ches, or 50 Tav 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 Kuf Ches was Nachas, no, one second Tav Nun Ches and 50 would be Tav Kuf Ches, right? So Tav Kuf Ches was yeah, the Alter Rebbe was born in Kahos, Tav Kuf Hei she says something happened to Tav Kuf Ches I'm trying to remember what Something significant. And then Tovkuf Nunches is when the Alter Rebbe went to Tanya, was printed. 1798. And Tov Reish Ches was when the Kut Torah was printed. 1898. And, uh, and Tov Reish Nunches was when the Yeshiva's Ten Chutmim opened up. So he spoke about all the 50 Yevils. And then Tavshin Nunches, that would be, that would mean that Tavshin Nunches, Tavshin, what am I saying, what did I say? Tavshin Nunches, so 50 years from that would be Tavshin Ches, right? Am I right about that? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. Tavshin Ches, well, Tavshin Ches was, Israel became a state, but that's another story. Uh, anyway, the Rebbe spoke about this and spoke about the periods of 50. So now we're like in 50 years, 50, 450 periods of Yevil from the, when the Alta Rebbe passed away. And a lot of fascinating stuff. To this morning, when the, before the Rebbe went to the oil 50 years ago, they brought the Rebbe a thing called Sefer Chassidim. The Rebbe had a, uh, had a, um, um, a request that they should gather all the pictures of all the Chassidim and make a Sefer Chassidim. And they presented it to the Rebbe this morning, Sunday morning, before he went to the oil, around now, a little later, like 11. And the Rebbe gave a bracha that all the chassidim should have generations, healthy generations of chassidim afterwards and so on. Then the Rebbe went to the oil, that's 50 years ago, and at night, Sunday night, tonight, there was another fabrega. It was very rare those days, it didn't exist. There were no. It was just pictures and names of all the chassidim and their families. Like a type of. They, and, and any time they wanted to revive it, for some reason, no one ever did it again. But it was, uh, it was given to the Rebbe that morning, and he was very... Uh, and then Sunday night was another Fabringen. And the Rebbe also, the Rebbe made a seum on the whole Shulchan Aruch of the Alter Rebbe. Spoke uh, about everybody giving charity in the number of 150. And not, not in small numbers, but in large, in large denominations. And everyone should add 150 hours of learning chassidus. It was all about 150. And uh, so I assume that the proper achlata this year would be to do the same thing for the number of 200. <coughs> based on the Rebbe's uh, directive then. Well, the few thing I wanted to share was um, that uh, the Shabbos afterwards, next Shabbos era was another Fabrengen. And they, the Rebbe spoke, the first Sikha, and after the first Sikha they started singing a 
the Rebbe stopped them and said, we know that we don't forbring every time Shabbos. We only forbring Shabbos Mubarakim. Those years are only Shabbos Mubarakim. So this is forbring is because of the Hilula of the Alter Rebbe. And no one thought of singing a Negan of the Alter Rebbe. And was very, very disturbed by that. He said, we spoke that we're standing in front of the Rebbe and giving him a pan. And it's like, everyone forgot that you're standing in front of the Rebbe. How could you, you know, sing another song? It shows that your mind is elsewhere. It's a week later, though. Yeah, but why is there for bring it now? Right. Well, for a week later, and if, if you really take it seriously, you know, it was just a... When I was, when I was reading these sikhs, the, then the end the Rebbe said, and now it's 13 years since Tavshin Yud. We're ready bar mitzvah. I Meaning since the Rebbe, he says... If you're by mitzvah, you should, we should, people should know better. <coughs> so I say to myself, now it's 63 years. By mitzvah plus 50, right? So, and I was reading the sikhs, and I couldn't believe that everything there, almost nothing was done. So, so I said to myself, I mean, this may be sharp words, but I'm not surprised at all. The Rebbe said a year before, a little, 11 months before his stroke, that I did everything. He basically said everything. So all you got to do is re- replay what he said and do it, and then you'll have him back. What would the Rebbe be doing here now? Repeating himself what he said 50 years ago. That's what we want. Now, I would prefer that also. That I don't mind that the Rebbe come repeat himself. But you know what I'm saying. At some point, I told you about my... Uh, I remember I was going, we used to go into Yechidus for our birthdays. I went till 17. Then the Rebbe stopped. But I remember I used to think already, what am I wasting the Rebbe's time? Same thing. And then the Rebbe said that, Chayel, Tav Shalom it was 1974. And the Rebbe said, every year the, 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 the Yom Aladas boys come in, same face, the same anhuggers, the same note, the same brachas. They come back, it's the same thing. It's my waste of my time, a waste of their time. And I, I learned much from that because it wasn't that the Rebbe didn't have compassion. Trust me, you could see the Rebbe repeat himself many times. And he had patience like God, you know, I mean, godly patience to knock into a bunch of, you know, uh, head, head, wood, wooden heads what he wanted and um, but at some point there was an expectation of maturity so as sad as it sounds I'm not surprised by Gimel Tamas in retrospect I don't mean Gimel Tamas, I'd rather the Rebbe be here trust me, don't get me wrong, I don't want anyone to misinterpret this but I understand that on a cosmic level the Rebbe had a stroke and then for two years was held here by God why? If we believe that God runs the show, and especially a Rebbe's life, you want to take him, take him. What are you, what are you, what are you playing around here? Like, what are you keeping the Rebbe locked up in a room with all the tsar of that? So I have no doubt that it's a form of like, like watching. Okay, what are you guys going to do? And now I say to myself, okay, now it's another. I had another eighteen years, nineteen years, and I'm, I'm not saying this. I'm not saying Musa to you. I'm saying speaking to myself. It just, it's, you know, if you really take it to heart, it's quite disturbing. The whole picture. What can I tell you? So I say to myself, I, I read the sikhs of 50 years ago, and literally, you just do what he said there without one hisofa, forget about 50 years more. You, you, you change the world. You should see what he speaks about, spreading chassidus, conquering the world of chassidus. You know, and there was no technology what we have today, and all that. So, that's my few hearts. But I said, when I read the sikhs, the river says, you don't even sing the Alter Rebbe's Nigan. It wasn't about the Nigan. It meant, where's your head? That's what, what are you thinking about? Huh? Where's your head? What are you thinking? So, anyway, being a Chayzer and being someone that has read this, I feel responsible to share it, so I'm sharing it. So I've been sitting, obviously, trying to create my own little revolution here. So I was reading the, the, my Marim the, of the Alter Rebbe, the last days of his life. You know, you really want to see somebody in their full colors. You see them... In the, under the you know under pressure so to speak, and fascinating because I found that in Tovshin Yates the Rebbe said that the Torahs of the Alter Rebbe in Kfar Piena that was the place where he ended up. What happened was in the month of Elul <coughs> that year, eighteen twelve, say August eighteen twelve, Elul Tov uh, Kufayim Beis, that's when the, the war began, and Liadi was close to the front, so Alter Rebbe began running. Now, the Alter was in Liadi for over 11 years. And the big bulk of Chassidus, as we know from the Alter Rebbe, was those years. Because he came out of prison, Tovkuf Nun Tess. He settled in Liadi, Tovkuf Samachalov. 
So the Maimarim, when you look at the Maimarim of the Alter Rebbe, they begin Tovkuf Samach Aleph, Samach Bey, Samach Gimel. Not that the Alter Rebbe didn't teach before, he wrote Tanya, but it was Maimarim, it was short Maimarim. The main bulk of Chassidus Chabad was developed in those 11 years in Liadi. That's, that was it. Now, he had to start running. And, he started, and there's a book lately written by Rabbi Munshain, it's called Hamasa Achlin, The Last Journey. It's the whole map. Of how the Alter Rebbe the last this would be Elul Tishrei Chesron Kislev Tevis four months, and the and the and the, the upheaval basically took a toll on the Alter Rebbe, and it's amazing stuff if you really start. I mean, I was reading the last few weeks. It's just like an amazing period in time because the Franco-Russian War is a major war, Napoleon. The Alter Rebbe, as you know, sided with Alexander, and I always learned that that, that the Alter Rebbe for that gave his life. So I just was reading that the Alter Rebbe said a very powerful line. He says, wherever there's tzaddikim that are shalei ba'erach higher than a generation, the klipa, the opposite, there's also someone that is extreme evil. And he, say, he brings uh, the Baal Shem Tov, there was the, the, the duke, for, uh, who's, who's then of Austria? The big duke, the big arch, arch duke. Fumble. He brings a few generations at this. Then with himself, he doesn't say the tzaddikim, you know, the Alter Rebbe wouldn't speak about himself, but he says, and in our generation we have Napoleon, a big clipper. He says the Rebbe, and Alter Rebbe said very sadly, he said, and vice days, we may need to have Mr. Schneffer's begashmis to weaken him, which really means that he had to give his life for it, which was, of course, his life was already extended because Dvaraleya had given her life for the Alter Rebbe earlier. It's interesting. So he began this journey, and once he started, to leave, once the people began liadi. The Maimorim, even though he said them, were not documented. But we have a whole bunch of them that were documented in the last days of his life. Because Simach Tzedek was with him. So the Rebbe said in Tavshin Yates that it would be worthwhile to gather them together. Simach Tzedek was on the journey with him? I don't know. I, I didn't check the whole journey, but he was definitely with him the last days. So I was reading, they gathered them, <coughs> they gathered them and it's interesting, the last terrorists of the Alter Rebbe are extremely personal. They're not, they're not just esoteric, they're all personal. Which volume? Tafkofayin Gimel. So it says, I mean, they're very short, most of them. Now, the classic Agar Sakeid is Simen I don't know if you ever learned it. Well, Iyu V'chayu Echad. That one is written, the Chaydim is Talkuseh. And it has the biggest Chidushim of the Alter Rebbe on, that, on what he wrote the last few days of his life. Can you imagine? The Chidush about Eir Sof, Ur, and the Chidush about Yesh. That the Yesh Hanivra comes from the Yesh Amiti. Those Chidushim are written in Kvar Piana. And a few others. I'll, I'll just mention a few in honor of Chavdal Tevis, if I may. He has a Torah on why you, wa- why you wash your face and it's a mitzvah to wash with warm water before Shabbos. That Friday, Erev, Erev of Gimel Tevis, the Alter Rebbe gave a Torah on that. And he explains it because it's, it's like the weakening, the warm water is like the week is the mevachin. It's the like weakening the klipa of the six days of the week. He explains up Kabbalah and so on. See, that's one Torah that he gave. Then he's, on that Shabbos, he spoke about Torah and Tefillah. That last Shabbos, but some said he calls it the Drush Achrin, the last Drush that he gave. And then Mitzray Shabbos, a few interesting things that happened. As Shabbos ended, some said Davin for the Ahmed that night, like last night, two hundred years ago. And because he saw it was the last moments of the Alter Rebbe, he, he, uh, the, the tune of the davening was very sad. Marsh Khair, it says, very depressed. The Alter Rebbe, he says, the, the story goes that Samach Sadiq writes that the Alter Rebbe waited till he finished, then he called him over and said to him that the Magid said, Atayr, al the Musa Kisei kid Mus Mara Adam. He touched like this, that the Mus Mara Adam, the face that you down below, you show that's the face that's created in heaven. And that's like essentially, your Marish is creating a Marish destiny. That was one of the last lessons. You can imagine, like, so we're talking about minutes before he probably passed away, to say something like that. It's like amazing, like, you know, not, and it's very reminiscent because another, there, there's three Rabbeim, Mitzray Shabbos, you know, we have Kimmel Tamas, Mitzray Shabbos, however you interpret it. The Rebbe Rashab was, was, was Mitzray Shabbos. Also, Beis Nissen, the Alter Rebbe, Mitzray Shabbos, and and the similar, the Rebbe Rashab too, in the last days of his life, 
So the Friedrich Rebbe was, was like when the, 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 the Rebbe Rashab said, bring me into the Zal. He wanted him to be brought into his bed. They brought him into the Pes Medrash. <coughs> and that's when he said, Irgein Himmel. And the Ksavim Lazar Chaich. And when he said that, the Rebbe, Friedrich Rebbe began to, like, couldn't take it. He, like, he, like, he, he says he was, like, began to cry, you know. And the Rebbe Rashab, who was very weak, stared at him and said to him, his spyless, his spyless, Meichin Meichin. And from then on, the Friedrich Rebbe stood like a stone. So the Beryl Rifkin writes in Ashkaf. Do you ever read Ashkaf to the Rebbe? That is, you got to read that. If you haven't read that, it's easy reading actually. It's in Hebrew, but it's very easy reading. It's unbelievable. What's it called? Ashkaf to the Rebbe. Which means like the bed of the Rebbe. The last, it's an expression from the Gemara, Ashkaf to the Rebbe. It's unbelievable text. you got to read this. He writes documents, the details of the last week of the Rebbe Ashkaf. But with halach, you gotta see how, the, how he puts on tefillin and how by night he's he's speaking in his sleep, delirious, and he speaks the deepest things. I mean, you gotta read this, especially the last page when he describes when the neshama leaves. Yeah, the tear your heart out. Unbelievable, unbelievable piece. You know, Is it in print? huh? Is it, in print? it should be in print. I have it here. Uh, yeah, it's, and Beryl Rifkin was was there. He writes, he was there, and he writes. Then he writes the first days of the Friedrich Rebbe's disease. You have to read it. It's like an unbelievable document, amazing document. Yeah. It's, it's like so moving. The Rebbe, everything there, and how the Friedrich Rebbe doesn't want to say a mimer. And the, and the, but let's go back to the Alter Rebbe. I'm just saying a similarity. Not, another thing happened. This the, the Alter Rebbe left a Torah called Nefesh Ashvela. You may have heard of this, Nefesh Ashvela. It's a short note of maybe 10 lines, 15 lines. And some say, there's different opinions. Some say he wrote it Mitzray Shabbos. So that would be the last thing he wrote. Um, some say that he wrote it before Shabbos. Well, basically, it's, it's definitely written close. <coughs> and in some places it says that on Shabbos, before Shabbos began, you know, the dinners you have to clean out your pockets. He took out of his pocket and he found this note. And he had this note. He gave it to the son of Tzedek and said, It's going to come to use to you. It's a kumit And in it, it's a, it's a, pretty, it's a little cryptic, but basically he says some things there that are. The Rebbe explains it. It's unbelievable. In the Chelet Tazayan, the Kutzich, there's an explanation of it. But essentially he says, Nefesh Ashvela, Lamis Lamite, it's a soul that is really lowly in this world because it's in a world full of lies. And uh, and he brings the measures that says that uh, when God created the world, he asked me this Ames, should he create the world or not? And Midas Ames said, no, it's a world that's Mole Shkarim, it's full of lies. Then he asked me this Achesed, Midas Achesed, it's a world that's Mole Chesadim. When the Rebbe Chazad is over, he says, the Rebbe's words, Givaldi Kivart, the Alter Rebbe says that this world is Mole Chesadim and Mole Shkarim. It's interesting, it's true. There's a lot of kindness, but there's a lot of sheker. And then the Alter Rebbe continues. So the Medrash says, so the Ebershter took Emes and threw it to the ground. You know, the Medrash says, Emes Me'erz Titzmach. And he created the world. So the Rebbe asks a question. Then the Alter Rebbe continues and says, even though it's a world of sheker, but not like the earlier generations where they did everything with truth and people or, or people were, were subject to being compelled to give tzedakah it says, today, even though it's Shekhar, it's just, we still have to involve ourselves with this world. Imagine it's the last thing he's writing or saying. It's, a, it's pretty... They say, I mean, they, this is reliable sources, say this, the Alter Rebbe initially rejected, you know, I guess the case when people came to him for Gash Mizdika things, he was very, he was dismissed. He says, why are you coming to me for Gash Miz? It was only later the Alter Rebbe accepted to also respond to Gash Miz, to physical things. So the Nefesh Ashvel is the other extreme. Do you know the story? It says that the Alter Rebbe, had he written Emes Lamitoi, we basically wouldn't have had the many chassidim. So he wrote Emes, so it wasn't so bad. Here he says, even if it's Sheker, the Alter Rebbe basically was acknowledging that a Rebbe has to not just be a Rebbe, but Ruchin Bros of Gashmis. You know, so that I means heavy stuff. Uh, so the interesting thing, the Rebbe asks a question. How could Alter, what does the Medrash mean that the world is uh, Sheker? Emes Amitisimotze, God Himself was Emes, created the world. 
You know the Rebbe's answer? You've got to see this answer. It's unbelievable. He says, Midah sa emes, says the world of Sheker. Mm-hmm. When emes is a Midah, but emes of Atmos can, uh, can also tolerate Sheker. Mm-hmm. So the Midah of emes is obviously, it says, create a world. No, the world is full of lies. How could you create a world? But there's a higher truth that says, create a world even though it's lies. I'm not, I'm not, lies not, is not going to, um, like the Midah sa emes sees a lie as a contradiction to itself. And Emes of Atmos can handle that too. He's so secure, he can handle... It's like I think Havdla, Churchill said, I think, during a time of war, the truth is so precious, you have to surround it with an army of lies. I don't know if you could bring that into there, but I just thought of that. Um, so let me just say one more, th- one, more one or two more things. What was the Jewish on Friday? <coughs> did, did he give a Jewish on Shabbos? Or did yeah, yeah, yeah. On Shabbos. Yeah. And what did he speak about in his last... Torah and Tefillah, basically. The Torah goes down and Tefillah is up. It's in here. I didn't I didn't really learn it in depth. I just read it quickly. Uh, there's, yeah, there's some fascinating... There's one more thing. you got to hear one more thing. Very interesting. About Mincha. Very, very... Didn't realize that one. Yeah, you can read this. It's really amazing what was going on there. Kamara Adam. That's a nice one. There's uh, here, this one. It goes like this. It says that when they were running, they were running from uh, the, uh, from the war. It doesn't say exactly when it happened. So the Alter Rebbe went with a wagon, and there was a bunch of wagons that followed him. There was a whole bunch of chassidim went with him, and they came once on a on a Hargavoya on a tall mountain. And the Alter Rebbe stood up in the wagon and said. Time, it's time, come time for Mincha. And then he said a Torah before they dive Mincha. What was the Torah that he said? It was relevant to their whole running. He said like this. This tefillah is called Mincha, not like the other tefillahs. Because Mincha is made out of, the Mincha, mincha was made out of Salus. Like simple, it was made out of flour and, uh, and oil, basically. He says other, he gave an example. A king, when you bring him something of gold and silver and precious stones, it's it, you know it's it it's uh, it's very special. But you bring him a klecheres, a simple uh, what's klecheres? Earthen. Uh, huh? earthenware. Earthenware. You know it's it's nothing nothing unique. So he says so when they brought a par and an aisle, when they brought an animal in the mizbeach, that was they like bring that was a chiddush. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. When they brought precious, precious things, there was no chiddush. He says, because in heaven you also have a Pnei Sheir, and you have a Pnei Aryeh, you have, you have a, in Malachim that are very powerful. When you, but on this world, you can bring, only this world can bring a simple thing, like a Mincha. And that creates the biggest joy, because it's not, it's not because it's, it's, it's not so, it's not externally special. So they said, that's when you, that, when you have a Mincha, when you daven shachrus or mayer, you're ready before work and after work. But you daven mincha, you're doing it in the middle while you're involved in your business and you're still daven mincha, that gives the greatest pleasure because it's in your simplicity. It's very similar to the shekel, you know, the same idea. A mincha be'emtza, she says, now too, we are be'emtza ha'tedach zman mincha. So they understood, we're now also, as we run from the war, we're also in the middle of the... So we daven mincha now, it's like a sign of this was another interesting thing. I understand that when you bring solace, it's it's not something even in this world. It's not <coughs> like gold like gold and diamonds and. Uh, but the one who has what's the point? The one who has all the riches. Yes. The simple offering. Just, just simple. The, the offering by the king. The king views what it what it how precious it is to you that you're giving it to him. The sacrifice that you're doing to give to him. Not that he needs it. He doesn't need gold or silver anyway. But if you bring something that's not so valuable to you, it's going to be giving valuable time. That's what the, 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 it's more than valuable time to find gold and diamonds. In other words, you're, you're your working service. in the middle of Your soul is really a diamond because you're giving whatever you have. Uh, giving yourself and you're giving your diamonds is not giving a power is more to me you don't have the diamonds your power is more I don't know we don't have the diamonds but you have a power right we don't have the power no but the times that the author is saying in the time that they said when you, give it, you don't see that each one has its own quality yeah, I'm just trying to think the answer that I didn't it's two different qualities two different qualities yeah if there's a quality when you bring 
the best, but the best for God is not nothing special. He doesn't need no gold and silver. When he sees that you went out of your way, you, for you, it was a, the effort. In the middle of the day, you used to have a mincha. Or you bring something that is, that for him is a chiddush. Let's put this in Seder Shtash, it's a much more chiddush, simple deeds than great achievements. Because greatness is a lot of, as I said, there's the Pnei de Markova, has plenty of giluyim there, fireworks. Example, I think it's, it's, it's a good example. Uh, my son is a very good gift giver to his wife. Uh, you know, he gives it. He's you know, and the birthday, etc. These things are very fushy, very fushy, right? But when her little daughter, three year old, presented her with a drawing that she put her heart and soul into in school to give it, you know, this brought tears to her eyes. The words he says here. A melech bas v'dam ain lechef doesn't have as much pleasure when you give him a, a gift of gold and silver than when you give him something that's very different that he's not accustomed to. It's like the tzipur medaberes. He's not accustomed to earthenware. You know, in the gashmi is the consent. So when you give him earthenware, that for him is like a a, a chiddush. Um, so one final thing I'll say is that I read that the last mimer that the Alter Rebbe said in Liyadi before he ran, started to run was um, a Pasha Pinchas it's called a Sakevis Hasheni and uh, the, the one of the chassidim that was there was Isaac Humler, you've heard of Isaac Humler who uh, was a big chassid so years later Rabbi Zalman Zezmer, which was a big another big chassid a very big one asked him to chazid the last maimer in Liyadi so Isaac Humler didn't want to you know, but then he pushed him, so he started. And within a few minutes, he fainted. And they revived him. A few minutes later, he started again, fainted again. And then he said, No, no. Because it was so emotional for him. The last mimer, you know, the Alter Rebbe Liadi. The next few days, you know, Zalm Zazman didn't want to would not leave him alone. So he came back to him and said to him, I need you to chazim me the mimer from beginning to end. So he said, Okay. He says, Hold on to my gartel. He held on to his gartel and he chazed the whole thing. That story is told. Even like the like Rebbe's themselves. <laughs> yeah, and then finally, I was reading that um, the, the, Rebbe, the, uh, the Alter Rebbe said that Paris and Liadi are in the same latitude. Yeah. He said, if I was able, I would shoot Napoleon. <laughs> they could throw a spear. Right. However, Vazalichtan, what could we do? The Kadar Aretz, the it's curvature. Good is in the way <laughs> so you have to be my what that means yeah, exactly you know you know I mean if you threw a spear strong yeah. enough but I guess the Kadar Aritz means that the the, the the world is still not going to let it's going to absorb it it won't let it go I remember since we're mentioning it already talking about the Alter Rebbe every year they used to sell the mitzvah Shabbos Bereshis I mean they still do but if I bring it so the Rebbe would have in the early years with Jechel and Gordon, the Gabai would put on a strimal. Remember? Twice a year you had the strimal. The Gabai and Shabbos Bereshis and Shimon Goldman on uh, Mishpatim for the Gemach. Okay. Uh, strimal. So, Rabbi Pinson, Shia Pinson, uh, so he put on the strimal. It was Shabbos Bereshis, Tav Shem I remember it vividly. <laughs> I was going to be one of the only people that heard the Rebbe say something. But I wrote it in the Hanach, so it's true. So then, they, then was printed a book called Migdalay. So, you know, new stories came out. From, so he told the story. He said that when the maps, the first maps of America, of the world were being made, this was the late 18th century. So they weren't being made with, uh, obviously, aerial. It was made based on navigators who would come back and they, had, they would map out all their precise travels by ship. So he said that they showed the Alter Rebbe a map of America. Listen to this. This he confer- no, no, no. Shia Pinson is telling. Before before selling the mitzvahs, the, the Gabba put on a strimal and said a Dvar Torah. That was the, the custom. They still do it, but then it was in front of the Rebbe. The Rebbe would always be have his chumash open and it was like this. I remember. He would not even pick up his head. He was oblivious to what was going on. He was just reading chumash. I remember like this. You know, like it was very deep. Why? Why would he, I would notice that all the time. Why would he do He's asking somebody to, do, to say Dvar Torah for He wasn't asking, this was a custom for the shul to sell mitzvahs. They did it in front of the Rebbe because they got more money that way. The Rebbe was a different, he was in a different world. He was not silly. They, they were in Eilam Hazen. I don't know. 
You asking that? me? Yeah. The Rebbe would never look at the person of Saint Bar who would be involved in his own other Yeah. 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 Be too embarrassing for the person. <laughs> anyway, so he tells the story that the, the Alter Rebbe they showed him on a map in America. The Alter Rebbe pointed that there's a mistake in the map. And they asked him, "How you were not, you were not there?" He says, "Istakla baraisa baralma." You look in Torah, you see the world was created based on Torah, and based on that, he sees a mistake. And the Rebbe, no one expected, because the Rebbe never reacted. He didn't even pick up his head. The Rebbe kept looking at the Chumash, and he said like this: "And the Iker is, Abishas is in America, is on the Kintas." The main thing is that when you're in America, you shouldn't make a mistake. I mean, and, uh, I always wonder what the Rebbe meant, but uh, the, I was the Vart. In other words, the Alter Rebbe is speaking from above. He sees in the Malach's talk about it. Now we're in America. Here the main thing is you shouldn't make a mistake. Here they made... <coughs> that was the Rebbe's response. How do you take that, by the way? You said that, by the way, he was talking on the spot? On the right on the spot. spot. As soon as he finished the story, without looking up. Where did you sit, by the way, when you were... Uh, I sat. I stood right across the Rebbe. Right near Yolkan? No, no, no. He stood on the side. The Rebbe sat, let's say, here. And there was a long table. Right, right. So the Rebbe sat here. Yolkan stood on the ground. Right. Like, you know, let's say, ten feet away. I stood across. I stood, like, where the camera was. Well, the table, the table was right in front, no? The long, that long table that. There was no table. There was a shvil. There was a path. You tall enough to see that? What? Tall enough to see that high? Oh yeah, well, I, mean, I mean, it was very close. It was pretty close. And if the rebbe spoke lower, I'd move up. Oh. I'd, by my marim, simchas Torah. Simchas Torah. Sometimes I would stand three feet from the rebbe oh. to hear because it was so noisy. I would move up. But that table that all the chassidim would go all the chassidim. No, the Rebbe stood the table is higher up, the yeah, platform. Right. Then there's the tables on the floor, like you yeah, see now. Main table that but in the center was not a table, it was a path. And then also that it was a table. path, it was a, bl- it was a path, and then there were tables. Other tables, I see. It was a path, like now there's a path, you can walk in between. The there was once no shvil. But all the people would have to go to the bathroom and stuff like that, and they would climb on the table. So the Rebbe said, make a shvil. So they made a shvil, they made a path. And uh, that's why I stood right across. It was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I remember. It was, in the later years, it was harder to hear. I, mean, I had to hear it, I mean. So, but when the author had seen the mistake in the map, I mean, everybody... my understanding of it? Yes. I, I, I get that, I sense, I sense what he's saying, but what do you think? I mean, how do you interpret it? I don't know. Easier to make a mistake when you're looking from the low In other words, Alter Rebbe had a whole thing aligned from Atzillus or higher, Ak, whatever. So he saw it, so he said it's a mistake. Right. Now we're down on earth and in America, he says, and here the main thing is we shouldn't make a mistake. Make a, make, make a mistake, in other words, how we live our lives, a pitara and so on. That's the, story I was there. No, 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 he's not, confirming not, it. Not, not the, do we have a source of the story? It's printed in Migdalais, yeah, from reliable sources. Yeah. I mean, I, I read it there, he repeated it, and the Rebbe commented on it. You know. Why? What? This, uh, this, this, story, this story is not one of these uh, fantastic. Uh, I think it's to what you said earlier. Pretty fantastic. Yeah, the Lamata Lamaira creates what's going to come back, so you better get it right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a It's more tolerable. Look, um, I would say is like this that basically, I heard people who worked in the Alta Rebbe's Rebbe, the last year or two of the Alta Rebbe's life, he focused a lot on the mile of Elam Hazah, the work done down here below, which is interesting, as he was like so-called leaving, he was talking about what you have to do here. You see the common denominator of everything I repeated here, Nefer Shashvel, the Sheker, the Yamu down below, the washing, you washing your face, Mincha, was all about that, you know, I may be leaving, but remember you are where it is. And the Rebbe says in that, the Mechid is there is also Maisa, the power of Maisa in this world, the power of the Yesh, that even though it's unord, it's un, it's, 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 what's the word, unadorned, it's, it's raw, it's difficult, it's Sheker. I mean, the Rebbe says those words, the Gewaldic, he says, the Gewaldic uh, expression, the Rebbe's words, the Gewaldic expression that the Alter Rebbe says, Molech Sadim and Molech Karim. My only understanding is because the Rebbe saying like it was capturing what the world is like, especially today. Also today, you know, people in America, there's never been so much chesed and zdaka there is like there is today in the world. Never, no one ever did such zdaka. Forever, a tour united, but never, and Shekhar at the same time. So it's molish karim, it's like interesting.
right? And, and yet this is the place. So mid it's uh, so those might share a few words about the Alter Rebbe of the Altevis. Two hundred years, and uh, since I'm already talking and, and, and venting, I did a little uh, informal survey, which the results are very venting saddening. Or yeah. Venting. <laughs> Well, no, I'm not inventing really. <laughs> Everything I said, more or less, I just <laughs> repeated. This was, this was all Chazari here. But I didn't really analyze much. No, 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 fine. Can it's all right. comment about that? I'm not sure Chazari, you want to go on and say what you I'll say one more thing and then you can say whatever you like. I, I did this like informal survey. I asked probably 140 people, all here in Kranach, the last two weeks. I did this. I didn't do it at this table because you guys are on a higher level. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. but, um, but I even, even Friday night, my own family, we had some guests here, so I asked everybody the same question. I asked, uh, what, is, what is 200 years of the Alter Rebbe's yard site mean to you? <coughs> you don't want to hear the results, my friend. <laughs> it was either nothing, um, or, you know, I, I'd like to know, it was between those two. Either nothing or chathchila, you know, period. And honest people are honest. And I, I'm not saying this, by the way, to be judgmental or critical. Everyone. And and one person said to me, my own daughter said to me, she said, I don't know what Chassidus Chabad means to me, to be very honest. Uh, she's a smart girl, and she's, she's in it, in the system, and all that. Um, and it saddened me, not because of, I'm not, not critical at all, God forbid. Because, yes, I think... Another person said to me, it's cultural. It means like a 200th anniversary. You know, America, 200th anniversary. We have a 200th anniversary. It's a cultural mark. We mark it as a cultural day. And now I think it shouldn't shock us to hear this, right? Because, you know, people are honest. If you're not honest, you, you could say, yeah, I'm from bringing it, changed my wife and all that. I'm not, you know, we're talking, let's be open and honest. And I and people then ask me, of course, some people ask me, so I'll tell you the truth. I can't really answer because I'm, 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 I committed my life to this whole thing. So for me, it, it has to matter. My whole, my whole work, everything I do is around this. So I can't tell you if I was not involved, maybe I'd be just like you. It's not like I'm going to hire my drega. I just happen to work around this. For me, this is like, I wouldn't be, you know, it's like it changed my whole life. So 200th year of like the, the biggest chiddush in history, from my point of view. But, but, but I'm not saying this because I feel uh, like, you know, on a higher level. It just happens to be, is it maybe circumstantial? Because I do it. Okay, if you worked, if you worked, let's say someone says the 20th anniversary of your uh, steel mill. If you work there, it makes a difference. You don't work there. It doesn't, who do I care about your steel mill? But it was interesting that uh, we've got some work to do. Now you asked, you know, like, and I think right. you asked me the other day, which, I, which I, it struck me, it was a very good question when you said, so let's find someone in Crown Heights in Lubavitch that learns to this, and we have a uh, a, a, a prototype. What? Remember what he asked? You, you hear? He said to me, you know, since we want to bring this to the world, let's take some people that were affected by this, show how it affected them, measure the results. So I said, I frankly would not go that direction. I'd rather start with a clean slate out there than go here, for obvious reasons. But it's, uh, it's so anyway. That's what I. But I'm, I feel consoled because the Alter Rebbe said, "I'm only sheker, the world full of sheker," which means we're also not immune to that sheker, and yet within it lies deep emes. And uh, like someone told me, I said, "I really doesn't mean anything to me, but I'll be on seven Sunday tomorrow night because I feel I have to be." You know, the Rebbe had a fine brain. Alter Rebbe, I learned something from Alter Rebbe, but more by commitment. You know, more by uh, feeling like. Uh, what do you feel? Like? Yes, you have to be. What does it mean to you? Well, I'm being uh, sort of molded by the, the language at the table because it, because it all fits. On the, on the one hand, for me, 200 years is a landmark of amazing testing. Because as I told you originally, if, if it hadn't been for the Alta Rebbe, I wouldn't be here. At the same time, I'm very, what's the word, frustrated by the fact that it has not pierced the world of Shekhar. You know, and it's very frustrating. And I think that's one thing we all have in yeah. common, one thing we're learning, and why we're interested in this revolution, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Because we all feel the, the imminence of it on the one hand, and the uh, necessity of it, and the frustration in making it happen. 
Well said. You know, I, but then, but that already means that it, that that's what matters to you. So even if you don't, you know, like it changed your life, fine. But also matters to you. The whole thing matters to you. Yeah, I mean, that could be like but not everybody. How many people are frustrated? Like how many frustrated people are like that? I don't know. But I could say, and forget the word, just me. I could look right here in my own heart and say the value that it's given, and at the same time how far I am from realizing that value. You know? Without looking outside, you know, it didn't happen. We'd be together anyway. We'd be in some bar. Uh, I don't know where we'd be. Maybe you would have had a bar. I wouldn't be here. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, <laughs> well, you're, you're probably younger. Right. Sure. You ever think where you would have been? <laughs> what, 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 no, really, what would you have been? Would you have been a businessman? Wealthy? Yeah, what? So. Huh? Um, um, a healthy life? Yeah. A healthy life? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be living alone. Hmm? Healthy life? I don't know if I'd be alive. Yeah, yeah. Because the, 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 the discovery of the Tanya, I told you the story, in this guy's farmhouse, was in close proximity, I mean, this is very personal, but, you know, so a trusting guy. To me, I was I was at the time uh, uh, studying music at uh, New, York, New England Conservative Music on one hand and the Berkeley School of Music, both simultaneously jazz and classical. And I was playing saxophone all day, and I was sitting on the stoop, drinking a six-pack of beer with a friend who gave me And for the first time in my life, I, my, my, I just cried out to God, and I said, and I, and I didn't believe him. Right? I'm not supposed to cry, but I said, uh, "Get me out of here, because I, I don't know how the hell I'm going to get out of this hole." You don't have to have How the hell I'm going to get out of this hole? Get me out of here! Help me! Probably one of the first. I mean, when I think about it, you know, the only times, I'm trying to think how many times I really so I believe one. You know, I read it every day, every week. I so wow. I believe one. And I sit there but that that itself yeah, is a madre a madre not even many people have such a serious. Yeah, yeah. no but I mean that's, but then, then it was after that that I found a tiny in that bedroom where I'm staying this house in the, so it was like an answer wow. last night a guy was for, for bringing him he was talking about how the very bit of shot whatever the shot handpicked every neshama to, to become students of Tantra Kanyimi so he was for bringing it wasn't a setting for me to or anybody to speak out because he's but I mean, I really. Who for brand? Who was it? I was handpicked by the Alter Rebbe. That's my. That's how I live. By the Alter Rebbe. By the Alter Rebbe. No, come on, it's the same thing. It's a different generation. It's the same thing as the I learned. Who was for brand? Who was for brand? Mince. What's his first name? A young guy. A young married guy. He says a shear and considers over there against him. The Friday Mince. From JLI. Okay, whatever. Very interesting. Why did you say you wouldn't be living? I mean, because at that stage of my life, hitting rock on bottom. Stoop, I was like, but you don't play an instrument. I mean, you weren't. Cool. Was I was, so what? I did a lot of things. Okay. That doesn't mean I wanted okay. to live. I mean, it's an just interesting thing. It doesn't well, mean I wanted to live. Yeah. 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 But, um, by the way, I'm more optimistic about this 200th anniversary. Yeah. I really am. <laughs> I'm not, by the way, this, you, know, you took this as pessimism? I'm just, no. I just told you. No, uh, but the frustration. I talked from Avram the frustration. And I feel the frustration too, but at the same time, we, you know, as a businessman, you have to make heads with that What's lacking? What's good? What's bad? You know, where, where, from the Yadi, from the Altaradium, where, where he passed away in this little place, it was a little godforsaken town right. <laughs> in Russia. And how many Chassidim were there actually at the time? How many at numbers? Now, if you 200 years later, Chabad is throughout the whole world. It's a known fact in the world. Presidents of all the countries. Big, big, yeah, it's, it's four thousands of uh, Chabad it's houses. Not, so what I'm just that. trying to say is that there's been incredible worldwide development. Now, the final nuclear reaction of Mughal and Mashiach hasn't occurred, but the there is there is. The uranium is out there. There's a, 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 There's a, a lot room. of accomplishments. A lot of plantings. And, uh, you know... Emes Be'eres Titzmach. Yeah. You know, the United States just had its bicentennial, bicentennial right? 200th mm-hmm. year, or I don't know how many years ago. And the United States may be in decline, you know, whatever. But I feel that our 200th year of the Lubavitch, that we only have to go up. That's for sure. We have to. We have to. Yeah. 200 was 1977, right? 1976. I, do yeah, so this, I, mean, I, I don't know what you do with these tapes, but I'm not really interested in my story. I mean, I'll cut this. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, no names are mentioned. You're not even on the, on the screen. So, but, but secondly, yeah, I'll cut it. Wasn't probably not loud enough either, but I'll, I'll make sure. Yeah, but I want to tell you a little interesting story about what we're talking about. I mean, is that the worst of it? <laughs> what? Is that the worst of it? Is it more? The worst of what? I mean, that, that's very inspirational, <laughs> what you said. Right. You should very. definitely say it. 
I don't see it as a in any way negative. Yeah, you know. Inspiration you're out of God. God. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful. If you were lying, staring at me. I never, I never made that about that's 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 right. That's What's the matter with you? <laughs> no, no, you like you remind me of the the the, 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 the ragged shover. Believe me, where I came from. The ragged shover. The ragged shover. Ragged shover. Someone came to ragged shover and and like wanted to ask Gama for his, uh, his writings. So the ragged, so he gave him his book and he's looking. The ragged shover is looking, he's looking at the front page. This he says, wow, look at. He's like amazed. So the guy thinks, why the ragged shover really ragged shover? I didn't know that there was a uh, publishing house in Shklov. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So you're talking about your personal things. He says, I didn't know you play saxophone. <laughs> um, but uh, what you said is very inspiring. I don't see anything, you know, if you said I was lying in vomit and I just had, uh, you know, taken some who knows what and, uh, you know, the story I told about David Carr. You ever hear that story? The night of the, what is it called? Unbelievable. You know, he's a writer now for the New York Times. He talk about a story of inspiration. You know, a guy, a real, a real cokehead. A real cockhead. Jewish? I don't think so. But he wrote this brilliant book. It's called, I think, The Night of the... Oh, I heard about it. Yeah, it's on NPR. Excellent book. So he writes... He's a recovery. He writes. He writes a business... He's a business writer. Every Monday, his columns in the New York Times business section, the left. Mm-hmm. And uh, But the story is an amazing story about hitting rock bottom, man, alive, how, how you could destroy your life. So he, you know, it's real coke and the whole thing and all the denial. The story took and, a turnaround also. Yeah, 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 major turnaround. But what it takes to turn around. I mean, I'm just mentioning, I don't know if it's not relevant to this, but you see, I use this because I, 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 I hope you understand, I'm the most optimistic that's out there. I when I say this, is just more of an, a realization of things rather than, and to me, I see beauty in the darkest places. I, you know, kind of darkness I've met. Trust me, d- darkness that no one thinks. In my life, I've never have imagined when I, you know, hearing abuse and what's possible, people capable of doing to each other, parents. That, I mean, nightmares of nightmares, you know, on the Nazi level. Wow. In our time, so, so yeah, and and, and it taught me depths of Chassidus because I saw people through Chassidus change their lives. It was the only force that they could deal with such darkness. No therapy, nothing. I'm talking about, you know, br- brutal uh, abuse. Father, alcoholic father beating his children to the pulp, you know, these type of things. Sexual abuse, trust me, the darkest. And I had to grapple. I mean, I never talk about this, but I had to grapple. But I had looked through this, I knew it in the light. I didn't know it in the darkness. You know, for me, I didn't live in a dark world. I mean, we all, got, we all have our dark side, but compared to that, first time I heard the guy came to me, I, I'll never forget it. I was 26 years old, you know, and I was relatively not naive. I was teaching. I just, you know, I was, I mean, I knew my stuff, I had a psychological side to me, but I was a kid at the end of the day, what did I know? And a guy came to me, twice, maybe 45, he lives in the old city, and um, he wanted to talk to me privately, because my, you see, my teachings were far more mature than I was, because I was teaching Chassidus, you know, but I, I knew how to teach it, so fine, but it wasn't me, but people thought it was me. <laughs> Uh, they still think it's me. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm ca- trying to catch up. It's, 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 it's take a lifetime. But that's uh, no. I, I, uh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so so he says to me, it was my office. I remember. I'll never forget this. It was to me one of the deepest moments that many of many afterwards that changed my life completely and my appreciation for Chassidus as much as I had known and I was I was writing for Brengans I, you know, I, I was in it I wasn't like on the periphery and he said to me um, he starts talking to me he says I want to share with you something and uh, okay it's confidential fine he tells me uh, I've asked permission just to repeat it I'm, I'm not using his name but he said to me I learned love from a dog with that exact expression I remember I looked at him, I mean, I, I always keep my composure, I didn't make any face, I didn't know what he's talking about, I, I didn't know where he's going with this, you know, this can be very crazy, so then he says to me, my father was alcoholic, he'd come home, violent, I was the oldest son, my father would try to get to my mother and beat her with a bat, I, was just, I would always get in the way not to make sure, so he would beat me, 
So my bodies were bruised almost nightly, black and blue marks, like my whole body. And I would sleep out in the yard by the kennel. And the only thing that soothed me was the dog. You know, a dog just has that. Says that's where I learned about love. You know, I remember he told this to me. I was like, first I thought, guys, hallucinating, or I never heard anything like this before. And I trust me, I didn't. Th- I, I didn't see myself like you know. I, I read. I read books. I read things, but it was like a person telling me a story. And then I realized, I'm sorry, you know, I, mean, I mean, I didn't say anything. God forbid that challenged him. I just listened, and I remember, I, I was like had nightmares from it because I started thinking about it. I don't, he didn't even want. To, he didn't want advice. He was just telling me. He was sharing his life with me. He says he started learning Torah, and I was coming to my class. My class is very meaningful to him. I remember he says very nurturing. He says it's more powerful than the dog. You know. Did you ever have a dog? No. I had a dog. So now I was not abused, but the dogs have a knack for picking up. They're very sensitive. Okay, it's God's creatures. Yeah. Sometimes and lick my hand. You know, yeah. To pick up that I wasn't feeling. I know. I fully understand. Uh, anyway. I, I, we became friendly. You know, he used to talk to me more. He, he wasn't even. It wasn't like I wasn't like he wanted my advice. He was more sophisticated than that. Yeah. He'd gone through a lot. Today he's a happy married guy. He's living in an old city, Shalayim. Yeah. He's a good guy. And he still has. I meet him. See still the anguish on his face. He's got certain wrinkles, you know, that never go away. But um, his child. But I remember then, I, because I'll tell you what I was struggling with. It wasn't, besides empathy and I cared and that, I said to myself, so what does Chassidus have to say about this exactly? Does it go to these places? Or it stops like by the door of uh, sanity? It doesn't enter the insane, if you know what I mean. And and then I started hearing, more people started sharing. And I remember hearing about abuse. I couldn't believe it, about fathers raping daughters you know, I don't want to be explicit but the worst the worst and not once children living literally worse than a Nazi concentration camp which was only for how long did you stay alive here for years a child by a parent it was horrendous I remember one once one, one, one person shared with me I literally was so disturbed I got into a car I drove to the close, lo- local bookstore I went to Barnes & Noble only Barnes & Noble I could find was in King's Plaza there weren't that many then, and I just thought I went to the I went to the section of you know abuse. I had to read about this. I couldn't I couldn't believe it because it was like the twilight. I'm seeing a world that people are living in. When they open up, it doesn't follow the rules of regular existence. Everything is different. Like by them, love is hate, and hate is love. Like I remember, I once raised my hand, and the person pulled back. I said, "What? What? What? You know? Yeah." Every time someone raised their hand when I was a kid, it was a punch. You know, so I realized what, what's going on here, and. And I, I started reading, I remember I read the book, The Courage to Heal. This is a very raw, heart-wrenching book written by two women. They're lesbians today, both sexually abused. But this is a book, it's, like, it's, it's, it's considered a Bible by the healing world. It's a very illuminating, it was, um, of all books, it taught me to appreciate this like I never appreciated it before. Can you imagine a book like that? Complete darkness, you know. But it's about the courage to heal, how you heal from it. But I saw, I saw the depths of Chassidus because I realized then that when Chassidus talks about Chesh I started understanding it completely different. You know, Chesh Er, there's a place where they meet. Is there God in darkness? Is God beyond light? You know, it became no longer hypothetical, uh, academic. Okay, God's beyond light and dark, and now, you know, we can find God everywhere. I started understanding Yusuf and Ermin and really in a very personal way. I'm telling you, it transformed how I understood Chassidus. I mean, not so much the Havana, pure Havana, but application, tremendously. I understood the relevance. I realized how deep this is. Because it really does address it. Yes. And the Sim Samarishan is not a hypothetical, nice little thing God pulled off to make a world. But the Sim Samarishan has real consequences. And there's some children growing up in homes where there's a Sim Samarishan in the fullest sense of the word there. You know, that, that type of pain. And start realizing, you know, that some questions when Moshe asks God, where are you in the pain, you know? It's not just we don't have Mitzrayim. The Jews who served the Mitzrayim. It's pain today. You know, you start just you just to start, and I and that's when I understood the Emes of this more than any because I never saw any in Torah. You don't hear Torah address these things. Like with Shosh Ami where it says, "What are you supposed to do with a child who grew up in a horrendous home and comes to you as a rov?" 
I had a rabbi said to me, he said to me, what am I supposed to tell him? I love it, I can tell him, do this, do that. What am I, how am I, where are the psychological, emotional responses in the Torah? They, 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 don't, they, don't, they don't exist. Abusing children, I mean, everybody keeps asking what's the halacha behind all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's not even mentioned. It's right. not an ask. Right? Yeah. Rapes, so yeah. So, so, but, 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 if you can't answer that, it's a big question. Where's the Torah Lashon Herod for this person? So the conventional answer is, you know what, forget about the past, you know, embrace the light, do mitzvahs, everything will be good. Yeah, but these people are tortured and they can't sleep at night. It's not like, you know, oh yeah, I'm going to just learn. It doesn't, and the Rebbe's approach was not just has chadas, pushed away. Can, these, these people, their whole lives are affected by it. Every relationship is affected. That's where, for me, became the real, I mean, you're talking about the real stuff, this is where it really, where, that's where it hits home. That's if you show that it could help there, then I remember one person saying to me, My darkness will never leave. And I said, Let me tell you something. I don't care how deep your darkness is, I saw real light. And I saw the Rebbe and I saw Chsidis. And the light of Chsidis is more powerful than your darkness. And we'll see who wins. And I will never give in, you know, because that person wanted me like to admit that they're hopeless, Where basically. Are you? No, no, we have won. Won. It's not. There's no winning and losing. Yeah, yeah. The person has found a glimpse of the light. And one of the things is because I, because a person like that needs to hear the the, the, the statement. I said it intentionally because I, I wanted them to know there's another way to look at it. You need to know there's a there's a glimmer of hope. Because well, the worst part is the hopelessness that results from it all. And it's hopeless. How do you explain Shulchan Aruch not dealing with it? I, I, it's a very good question. I think about it a lot. I think, first of all, there's a thing called Leib Shuftenas, you know, which means Shulchan Aruch has its limits. It doesn't talk about Nazis. It doesn't talk about things that are off the map, off the reservation. That's number one. So I think the horrors that are existent, the Torah never really went, goes there. The Rebbe once said something very fascinating, Toshim Em Hei, It was very interesting. The Rebbe said that there's a Shar HaKlippus in Eitzchayim. The Rebbe said, because for there to be clip in the world, there has to be, an, in Torah, a discussion about clipper, in a sense. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty wild idea. Mm-hmm. So the Torah, not that the Torah creates it, but the Torah, like, conceptually, so to speak. So then, and then the Rebbe said, and that's why there's certain things not mentioned. Because the Torah doesn't want to even give it any credibility. Yes. So, I, my, my, so I, not that the Rebbe said exactly what I'm going to say now, but I derive from that... That it could be the Shulchan Aruch does not talk about something uh, about you know, it talks about a murderer. It'll talk about playing talk about crime. Rape. It doesn't talk about huh? Talk about rape. But but rape of a father and a daughter, and incest. And, incest yeah, what's incest? Chayiv misa. It's as, as harsh as it gets. Gilu arayis. That's a whole Torah. It's very detailed there. Well, then, we read it on Yom Kippur. Whereas rape is generally it always, is it yeah, I was always shocked that rape is dealt with is seen in such a lenient way in the Torah. You have to marry her then, money if she yeah. wants him, who would want to? And, 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 and a monetary. You got to marry her. You're the rapist. And a monetary. Thing. Between you and me, and I mean, I, I, I don't want to go there, but a lot of I, I, you know, I unfortunately deal with some of these things. A lot of rabbonim, they will not say it publicly. They say. It's because human nature is people rape each other and so on. There's also molestation. What they call today this was always done and it always happened. And uh, it's not that not that we think it's great, but uh, and, and that's why we don't have to report it to the police. And this, this is rabbonim that say this. I can't. You know something? I can't tell you about zman ha, ha shas or zman moish rabbein. I wasn't there. I don't know. Maybe it was different teva, but I know for sure. There's no way. I personally can testify without a threat of doubt that, that there's a thing called murdering a soul. Yes. And molestation murders a soul. It's not just a, a, a little crime. It's not someone gave you a slap once. And, and murder is murder. And murdering a soul, the, the, the devastation and damage that it does, I, I, I know it from personal observation. So, I, so the, the, the terrorist speaks about rape. I have to say it's not talking about that type of situation. That's the only conclusion I have. And the Torah doesn't really talk about these scenarios. I know that rape was then, maybe it was a thing that was common, maybe it was war, 
the whole world was different. I don't know. I don't know. The, the rape of today, I cannot see that the Torah would... I mean, the Torah sees as, as seeing killing a soul as being a big thing. How could it, you know... I would have asked the Rebbe if I had the opportunity yeah, to such a Rebbe question. Never spoke about that. I wondered about that. No, he never said... He never minimized it, but he never... I have not found. I looked around. I would have definitely. I've written the Rebbe a whole thing about this. I would have gotten. But I know that. I, I, but I can tell you. I'm not saying this arrogantly. I'm almost sure the Rebbe would answer. What would the Rebbe answer? Because he answers always this way. He would say, "You go to. You did the mumchen, mumchen." By the Rebbe, this was a mumchen question. It wasn't a question by the Rebbe. If a Reifer says that this is dangerous, it doesn't matter what the Torah says. Rape is, is, is the Torah doesn't say rape is good. However, it deals with it. There's no way the Rebbe would say to, to, to experts say you have to follow what the experts say. Uh, that's, I'm, I'm convinced that the Rebbe would answer something of that nature. And that I, I didn't I didn't study the halachas about it. I have to go back and see if it's limited I mean, and so on. I don't think you can just take. Who would think that voluntary incest, so to speak, is high misa? I mean, if, assuming there was a voluntary situation, and, if it was a pol- crime, and yet with a rape, a violent. The rape, uh, which is a violent oppression of another person, is, uh, is just uh, a little worse than the dog. What's the meaning? And you have to, and you have to marry the guy. <laughs> just a little so, maybe, like so maybe it's not rape, maybe it's seduction. Exactly, you just said it, maybe it's not rape. Maybe the rape, what we call rape in the Torah, is not rape. That's, that's, that's why I'm saying to you, I have to study it again. It may be talking a far milder form, where it is, where it is like that. You know? So look, look, how could, no, no, there's a, there's a spirit of Torah. A child in Torah is not seen like the Quaker saw a child or some of the others that is an unshaped evil spirit. You know, that's the Quakers describe a child. Dev, dumb, and mute, and has an evil spirit in it, and that's why beating a child is what like, like brings God back into it. There was, yeah, yeah, the Quakers write that. Look at some child psychology books in the 40s and 50s. Well, Mishlei says you spare the rod. Yeah, but not, and yet what? You, you, and you see that comment, the Rabbeim just didn't spare the rod. The Rabbeim touched their children. So, you know, you have this few... My point that I'm trying to say is, there's a Ruach. There's no way that a Hevel Shein Beichet that says that even when you build a base of Migdash, you don't... al tigu right? The children you leave Torah, learning Torah. That they would be violated, and the Torah would see that as like, okay, big thing. I can't, I can't see it. It's just not. It's not in the ruach of anything I've ever learned. So if the Torah does minimize, so to speak, rape, I have to say it's not. It can't be that. It doesn't make sense. It's it's Everything the sensitivity to children. Judaism is based on healthy children. Avram, the whole Avram's greatness. On the end of the day, when Hashem says, "How could I conceal from Avram's doim?" Because why? Because Avram, oh, he says that because he gave his life. It's the ultimate compliment to Avram. It's not his God fearing that he committed his life, his children, to Lasses Dukkim Mishpat. Yishmol behaving a certain way, even sexually, right away banished from the house. The whole Torah is based on. By me, Tarsh Mishpacha means something completely different than when I want. It's not Mikva. Tarsh Mishpacha means, as the words say, a pure home. A home that is pure in ruach, in spirit, sexually, emotionally, psychologically. A pure environment, a healthy environment. You just were talking to my granddaughter. You know, God forbid. I mean, you have your own grandchildren, children. The purest thing. By me, the violation of a child is probably the worst possible sin. I don't think there's a sin worse than that. Because they're, they're defenseless. So I can't see the Torah suddenly minimizing. And no way. It doesn't make any sense to me. If I, if I found halacha that said that something is not so big, I'd have to say that's some anomaly and figure out what it means. It just doesn't, it, it's impossible. I don't know what was in his mind. That what, I, I had the same question like you do, but it's, there's no way you could touch like that. Defiling a child, is there a worse crime? It's irreversible. It's generational. I mean, it, it doesn't get worse than that. It's like, it's a, you know what I'm saying? Rape of an adult is also devastating, but a child is like, it, it, you know, there's, there's no, there's no protection against it. I'm just thinking to myself. All, all of post scheme. All sins. All, all post scheme all throughout the ages. Children, the childless children, they, they, they don't they, deal with. They never come up. Very, it? very little. I know that's weird. It's 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 either either was of the ma- or either was not even considered a possibility. But they definitely do, they, but they were not covering it up. These are talking about bali halacha. You're talking about pure shemaim, so they weren't covering it up to say that it didn't exist. It was never reported. 
Yeah, but to say that it exists in the shtetl. Maybe when people are healthy, that they didn't exist. Because let me ask you a question. They say most abusers were abused. Now, there must have been a point that someone there wasn't abused. I don't think other Machava, they may have done some things wrong, they ate from the tree, but abuse started somewhere. So maybe it was a pure environment, and Taka was a holier world. And there were a few crackpots, I'm sure. There were always some criminals, but it wasn't a common. I'm not, I'm, I, again, I didn't live there, and we weren't told, you know. I'll tell you what, I, my, my, my good old, uh, the, I mean, I'm still skeptical, but when I was more, more skeptical, I used to always ask, well, how come we're only told the good stories? How come we don't know no one tells us the, the nightmares that happened in the times of the Baal Shem Tov, or, you know? We only hear the, the tzaddikim, the story, and we always have happy endings. So I always wondered, right? So you know, it sounded to me very self-serving. No, Chumash, yeah, Chumash, and the contrary. Chumash is a nightmare. Nobody is intact there. Brothers, rape, incest, castration. <laughs> killing. Is there one brother that doesn't end up killing his other brother? I don't think there's one story where there's an intact family. Everyone's dysfunctional, seemingly, based on our standards. Cain and Hevel, Nayak's children, you go, Avram's children, Yitzhak's children, Yaakov's children. I mean, is there one? What's going on? They think Yaakov already, okay, so they decide yeah, to sell. When Moses was the, 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 the son, Elia, the, the, the bris of the child, the, she, she yells at the little baby. She says, You, you almost killed my husband. You're a Val Hassan uh, Mavis. Right, uh, you know, uh, what do you say? A little baby. There's another time he said he saved the husband. You would think that would be a view. <laughs> Sephora saying that to her son, who's not, what is he responsible for the fact no, that he did it? it, it, it it's tied two different ways. It's tied also that the by you said you saved him by uh, 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 the uh, uh, If you look at the rocks, you look at I don't know. I, I, I tell you the truth. For me, all these issues were resolved when I started learning Chassidus. And when I, when I learned that Torah Medaber is Bel Yainim. The whole Torah is in heaven, in the spiritual. And Betachtainim is Meramezes. The Torah the, the down below is already the, the technical part. So when you hear the Torah that way, it's a whole different story. Then the Torah is a blueprint for life. And then, then it played itself out. If the Torah was based on these behavior, these people, yeah, you could. It'd be hard to like hard pressed to really to say, okay, they're my heroes exactly. But if you understand the shvatim and the Ovis as ruchnas the archetypes, it changes everything. Then there's, I'm not saying Amy creates but the It's still pshat, but pshat is informed by the ruchnas. It's not just some some story. You know, the the the, the Torah is very challenging if you well, don't. We always learn, the Rebbe always learns the the mila to the tzaddik and that the Yosef's brothers didn't oh. sin and David and Melech didn't sin. And, so you have to and say everybody, everybody's everything that apparently that a Litzvah or somebody that didn't learn Chassidus would say, boy, these they're human too. All these animals, all these people they made to Chassidus always learns ma, that everything is. No, the answer is because ma, no, no. But, but, I think there's two levels. There's the the in Ruchni is for sure. There's a whole, like, so-called the unfolding of a spiritual cosmic drama. Drama. In that sense, things are far pure. But that doesn't contradict, you know, the fact is that Dasari Ruge Malchus, even though it was done by this anti-Semitic Roman, but remember they asked in heaven, is it correct that we deserve a punishment? And the answer is yes. And that's where they allowed, you know, the Rabbi Shmuel, we say in Yom Kippur, because they sold this Yosef into slavery. That's when he comes to them. So you see that there was something... Whether you call it a chet like your Yetzirah or my Yetzirah, they may have had deeper intentions, but you cannot dismiss it that it was just they didn't do a mitzvah. Yeah. No one says selling Yetzirah was a mitzvah. Right. Yeah. 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 Like a mitzvah, not exactly. Bas-Kar- no, there's the explanation. Bas-Kar- no, the explanation, they saw Yetzirah as challenging Mashiach, challenging Yehuda. Right. So, no, but so their kavana was good, but no one says that they, 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 no, there was not consensus. The kavana was, yeah, but the kavana is a kavana, and then there's the actuality. Yeah. Um, that, that you can learn lessons from it. There's plenty of lessons. Anyway, <laughs> are we learning more? What are we doing? I think this Chavdala Tevis. I think this is learning. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, this is uh, to me. This is where it comes out play, to play. I, I, I was talking to the Shluchim on Thursday night, and, and I didn't even go this far because a lot of Shluchim are not ready for it. This is how this has to be taught. If you cannot face a person who suffered really greatly. And have something to say to them. From Chassidus, I don't think you're even hitting, coming close to the thing. When someone sat by the Rebbe, 
And even though the Rebbe may not have said a mimer to him, but the Rebbe was being informed. You know, I was saying to Shluchim, they were surprised when I said, I said, it's not just when you teach a class, it's when someone's come to you for advice. You're different than a therapist. You're different than another rabbi. You're a chassidish soul doctor. You should be using, not necessarily the words of chassidish, the, but the spirit of chassidish to help heal people. It's about healing. I don't mean healing as in medicine. It's healing, it's about a healthy life. How you're aligned, how you're connected. And that to me is a, a critical component. That's why I was sharing the stories with Alter Rebbe. You see how he t- sees it some exotic as Marish Khaira. It's a lesson in life. He didn't just do my Torah from the Magid, I'll give you a Torah. It's not Dvar Torah. Right. It's a lesson in life. Everything is a lesson in life. Everything the Rebbe ever uttered. Where was the Midlash? You know, I'll tell you something. I don't know. Were you here when I gave the class? Uh, who was it that said to me? Oh, I gave it. To, you learn this, they learn Iron Base. Let's talk about Iron Base. And I've been asked this question. And it, 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 it literally, you know, it could bring you to tears when you think of it this way. So it looks like Bayes is formidable. Look at these hundreds and hundreds of pages. But let's just change the... I'm going to just give you a, a little different scenario. Imagine you go into the Rebbe Rashab, or the Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe. doesn't matter. And you say, you pour out your heart and soul, say about all your issues. My, my life, my children, Parnosa, my psychological, whatever, whatever. And the Rebbe starts instead of like answering 